In the last video, we discharged at PCs and a smartphone. We checked to see if static electricity from the discharge gun breaks these technological devices. We also tried on a human body. Today's video contains segments from the experiment that didn't fit in the last video. I was fortunate to be allowed to check out Noise Lab's laboratory. Let's take a look. Whoa, there are so many things in here, very different from what I had in mind. There's something big right here, about my height. Looks like a box of some sort. It says, Lightning Surge Simulator. Is this used for lightning simulation then? That's right, it's called a lightning surge simulator. It doesn't simulate a direct lightning, but instead it simulates an induced lightning for experiments. It's mainly for the overvoltage that occurs from the outlet and stuff. What's the maximum voltage that this can hold? The one on the right follows the international guideline. It holds 15 kilovolts or 7.5 kiloamps. The left one follows the Japanese national guideline and holds up to 20 kilovolts or 4 kiloamps. It seems like the current on this one is way stronger than the device we used in the previous video. Right, the power is much greater, so in the worst case, it can lead to death if used incorrectly. Oh, I see. Just out of curiosity, how much would this cost? Hmm, I'm not sure, but it's probably the same as a luxury car. Oh, that's quite expensive then. Experimental equipments must all be really expensive. Okay, let's move on to the next room. There are actually many rooms in this lab. And each room is capable of conducting different experiments. We'll take a look at this room next. But before that, can we check out this door? This is what's called a shielded room. It's basically a room with all sides covered with metal. Take a look at this door. It's very thick and heavy. When you close this door like this, What happens is that inside of this room right now, you will not receive any data of any sort. If you were to test static electricity or radio waves, would you use a shielded room like this one in general? Yes, for testings involving radio waves, using a room called an electromagnetic anechoic chamber is very common in general. So, that's how it is. Let's check out the next room. On this side, we have like a small office. And then we have another shielded room with metal walls all around. Let's see what the inside is like. Whoa, look at this. There's a huge cone lying down in the room. Let's see what this is. Is this also fully made of metal? Yes, it is. Right here, it says GTEM cell. I've heard of something called a TEM cell, which has something to do with high frequency. But what does GTEM cell mean? Yeah, in terms of structure, TEM cell is like a large version of a coaxial cable. Usually, it is used for irradiating strong magnetic fields. A normal TEM cell has a shape with slightly tapered sides, slightly different from this one. The max frequency is somewhere around 200 to 300 megahertz, so it can't handle too high of a frequency. But this one is slightly modified so that it can handle high frequencies in the unit of gigahertz, so that's why it has the G in its name. Ah, I see. Is that where the signal originates? The root over there seems very thin at the very beginning. That's where the high frequency current, what makes up the radio waves, flows. Then the strong radio waves get irradiated into the chamber of this GTEM cell. I see. I want you to look at this right here. 
There is a door here. Does this open? Yes, you can push it down. It opened. It's a little dark inside. Oh, wait, the light turned on. This is what the inside looks like. There's a bunch of spiky things. There's a bigger door on the other side, so let's see it from there. Let's take a look at it from here. You see all of these blue spiky things? It's like a sponge, it's very soft. What is this? It's called the radio wave absorber. As the name suggests, it absorbs radio waves. In here, radio waves flow from the tip and towards the root of the spikes. At the back of it, it collects all the radio waves together. Even above here, there are more of the absorbers. It's quite amazing. Do you happen to know how much this would cost? <laughs> I wonder too. It's not our product, so I can't honestly answer that, but I would guess that it's somewhere around $200,000. Oh, wow. So in this room, there's this big machine like this, and anything done here is usually related to testing radio waves and such. Now, we'll move on to the next room. We'll actually move to another building. This place is in the countryside, but there is a reason for that. For testing facilities like this, it's often the case that they are built where radio waves do not reach. In fact, this facility is quite far away from any city. If you take a look around this place, you can probably tell, but the only things here are farms and mountains. This is the next lab we'll be looking at. It says anechoic chamber. Let's step inside. Ooh, take a look at this. There's this huge, very secured door. It almost looks like a door from one of those safes you see in a bank underground. It seems this doesn't open with the knob. Ah, instead it opens with this button right here. This is amazing. Okay, the door is open now. This is such a cool system. The door is made of metallic materials and is very heavy. Let's check out the inside. This is a really cool room. My voice really echoes in here. Over here there is a brown wall, but not quite ordinary. There are a bunch of small holes in it. What is this? That is also a radio wave absorber. It's a bit different from the spiky ones. It's called ferrite tile. So this is what absorbs the radio waves. That's right. The other walls are white, but what about these? Actually, they also have ferrite tiles on them. But because there is a white wallpaper over the walls, you can't see the tiles directly. So the absorbers are underneath this wallpaper. I see. So even the floor and the ceiling are also... Yes, they have tiles on them. That's amazing. There's some kind of horn-looking object right here. What is this? That is called a horn antenna. In this room, we do testings such as irradiating radio waves and seeing if it causes malfunction in electronic devices. We use this antenna for that, but it's usually only used when we reach above 1 gigahertz. What kind of testings are conducted in this room? Most of the things we test are electronic devices. Mainly, we test devices that are often used in households and such. What about this pole right here standing up? 
This is called a field intensity meter. It's used for measuring the field intensity when actually irradiating radio waves during our tests conducted here. So this probe here is used to measure. Exactly. What about this part of the floor that is cut in a circle? That is called a turntable. And we can actually rotate this part around automatically or manually. For actual tests, we would put a table on top of this and place an object on top of that to test. But obviously, we can't have a person in here to rotate it around while the test is going on. That's why we made it possible to rotate it from the outside and apply radio waves from all kinds of angles. That's what this is made for. I assume that's where the radio waves are emitted, but are those radio waves safe even if applied on humans? The radio waves for this aren't quite that strong, so it's not like it would have any negative consequences right away. Nonetheless, it is not good for living organisms, so we don't even try that in the first place. I see, I see. So this was one of the rooms in this facility. As a special edition, we were fortunate enough to take a look around this noise lab's facility. From an anechoic chamber, static electricity lab, and even a GTEM cell, we saw a lot. It made me realize how fun and interesting this was. It felt like a factory tour from when we were younger. Well, this is it. Thank you for watching.